Good morning, Living Waters Chapel. It is a pleasure to have you here. Happy Mother's Day. We have Eliana here, and she is going to start us off with something special for today, okay? God created mothers. When God created mothers, all lovely as can be, he made one extra special and saved her just for me. Thank you, Eliana. Thank you. Are you ready to worship today? That was a form of worship, too, wasn't it, honoring our mothers? It is good to have you here today. I'm going to switch mics. Will you stand to your feet? I chose Psalm, let me make sure I have the right one. Psalm 92, verses 1 to 5 and then 12 to 15. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night on the instrument of 10 strings, on the lute, on the harp, and a harmonious, harmonious sound. For you, Lord, have made me glad through your work. I will triumph in the works of your hands. O Lord, how great are your works. Your thoughts are very deep. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him.
tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know oh, I won't be shaken I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance
the God of Jacob Whose love endures through generations I know that you will keep your covenant I'm calling on the God of Moses Who opened Sing, oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness. On your faith. The God of Mary, whose favor rests upon the lowly. I know with you all things are possible. I'm calling on the God of David, who made a shepherd boy great. Goliath, but I've got my own giants. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness. On your faith. your children then you hear your children now you are the same God you are the same God you answered prayers back then and you will answer now you are the same God you are the same God you were providing you are providing now you are the same god you are the same god you moved in power then god moved in power now you are the same god you are the same god you were a healer then you are a same God. You are the same God. You were a Savior then. You are a Savior now. You are the same God. You are the same God. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you. Rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness, on your faithfulness. You freed the captives and you're freeing hearts right now you are the same god you are the same god you touch the lepers then i feel your touch right now you are the same god you are the same god I'm 
calling on the Holy Spirit. Oh my dear river, come and fill me again. Oh, come and fill me again. Oh, come and fill me again. got nothing new How did I express all my gratitude I could sing these songs as I often do every song must end So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I'm nothing else fit for a key. Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. I've got one response, I've got just one move with my arms stretched wide. I will worship you so, so I throw up my hands and praise you again and again, cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah, and I know it's not much, but I'm for a king except for a heart singing hallelujah hallelujah we lift up our voice to you O God and we praise you God Don't you get shy on me, lift up your soul, cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs, get up and praise the Lord. Here's our wake up call for this early in the morning, right? Oh, come on my soul, oh don't you get shy on me, lift up your soul, cause you've got a lion Oh, don't, don't you get, get shy on me, lift up your song, cause you got a lion inside of those lungs. Nothing else fit for a king 
gratitude to you, Father. So many things that you lead, God, and direct us in our life that we're not even aware of. You go before us, oh God. And Father, we recognize that today. We take this time to recognize you as a rock of our salvation, our strength in dark places, the answer to the complicatedness of life. We lay it all before you, God. We're restored. We rest in you, God. Thank you for this time of worship. Will you greet those around you? Hey, hey, well, good morning. Welcome to Living Waters Chapel. We are so grateful that you have chosen to worship with us. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there and to the rest of you. Happy day. I just, I love getting that in there. So we want to welcome you. Uh, If you are a guest, I would encourage you to please uh, complete a connect card that is located in the a chair rack in front of you, and uh, please bring that out to the Connect Center, and we have a gift for you. As you can see uh, behind uh, behind me, it says that today we are celebrating women of service. So we have uh, flowers for ladies in grades seven and above. So now we do have a table that is uh, down at. Uh, Entrance number three, which is uh, uh, outside that entrance for uh, if you have kids that are part of kids zone and you don't want to try and 
juggle everything from one end of the building to the other. You can, uh, you can grab your, your flour as well as uh, succulents. If you have no idea what that is, I don't have a clue either. So um, that's, uh, that's uh, what they're just available for you as well. So um, enjoy and uh, have a great day. We want to just highlight the uh, activities and events that are uh, taking place in the uh, upcoming week. Uh, we have our uh, Time Out for Moms gathering that is going to take place on Monday, uh, May 15th, beginning at 6.30, and Tuesday, uh, May 16th at 10 a.m. The information is uh, listed uh, in your uh, bulletin and available online as well. On Wednesday, May 17th, the ladies will be uh, going out and doing some uh, visitation. And uh, the information is uh, listed in your bulletin. Uh, ladies, if you uh, come on Wednesday evening and you're going to be uh, not part of the uh, team of ladies that will be visiting other women, we would just encourage you uh, to join uh, Pastor Rich's class or uh, meet in the, in the prayer room and uh, you will be blessed. Uh, this coming weekend... Uh, Friday, May 19th through Sunday, May 21st is our weekend of strategic fasting as well as then we will have a time of prayer on Sunday, May 21st at 4 p.m. Uh, over in Classroom 104. Uh, this coming Saturday, there is a 5th and 6th grade uh, hangout. Uh, that will be uh, taking place from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And uh, once again, the details are there in your bulletin. Uh, next Sunday is uh, the Sunday that we set aside as uh, celebrating the life of individuals in our church family who have passed away since May 2022. And uh, if you have a memorial tribute that you would like to uh, submit... And a, and a photo and things along those lines. That information is uh, out at the uh, Connect Center, and you can also submit that online. However, today is uh, the deadline, and, and uh, we have a, a special guest uh, with us next Sunday as well. And uh, her name is Cindy McKinley, and she is uh, head of the More Than Conquerors ministry that uh, provides ministry to widows and widowers of uh, credential holders within the Pennsylvania Delaware uh, ministry network. And I know that she will be uh, just sharing information that will be a, a blessing uh, to you. And uh, if you've not gone through the loss of a uh, loved uh, of a spouse, um, should Jesus tarry? It's all going to, we're all going to be there. And this will be some uh, great information that she'll be able to, to share and, uh, and just uh, be an encouragement and a blessing to us. So uh, we once again want to say thank you uh, for your generosity, uh, your giving of your, your time, your talents, your resources. Uh, as you give, we are able to uh, complete the mission and vision that God has uh, called, that God is calling us to do here at Living Waters Chapel. At this time, I'm going to ask you uh, to direct your attention to the screen for a video that will introduce the message that Pastor Melody is going to come and share for us this Mother's Day. <laughs>
good morning. It is good to be here, isn't it? On a special day. Excuse me, sorry about that. Our scripture text for today is John 12, 1 through 8, and Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. Before I get to that, this Mother's Day, let's remember that the way we live our lives should be a fragrant offering to God. We'll talk about Mary Magdalene, how she demonstrated this sacrificial love. If you remember, one of the things that she did that's so memorable in the Bible was taking that liter of expensive, precious perfume and pouring that over Jesus, his feet. She washed his feet with that costly perfume, despite the embarrassment and criticism that she received from others. Let's celebrate the women in our lives who serve others, remembering that to worship Jesus extravagantly will cost us something, and in the end, the reward of a faithful life will be worth it. This is the introduction to what we'll get into within the next half hour here. And just it'll affect and um, influence each one of us. Last Mother's Day, I had the privilege of speaking with you as well, and just making sure that this message is not just for moms and grandmothers, sisters, but it's for everyone that we can all pull something out of this. And of course, worshiping extravagantly to Jesus is one of those that we can all do. The way we live our lives leaves a lasting impact on people. So then you might ask yourself, well, how am I impacting others? Let's take a little evaluation for ourselves. People that are in my life, my family, my friends, coworkers, how do they view me? In the sense of eternity, what difference will I make in that piece of their life for eternity? Have any of you heard about, I think it's called, it's a poem called The Train of Life. And it's, it's really beautiful. I should have um, pulled it up for you today, but it, it came to my mind uh, just now how some people you're riding, you have your own train, your own boxcar for life. And you're in that. And people, as you're going down your path of life, people come on and off that. Some stay. I have a girlfriend. We, our mothers, were acquaintances, but they met, they became closer friends in the hospital, giving birth to us. So I was born four hours before her. She's still a friend of mine, so we always laugh that we're friends since the moment we were born, practically. But she stayed on my train for life. Hopefully, she'll be there for the rest of my life. Um, think about that as I'm talking here, the people that have come and gone in your, in your life. Some stay. Some stay for a short period of time that God has us in, or has them in our life for a purpose for that time. But going back to my question, what impact did they make on you? How did God use them? And how did you impact them, allowing God to use you? People in the Bible faced stress. Sometimes when we think of how we impact other, we think, well, I'm stressed out a lot. Or with the stresses and the chaos of life, am I really impacting anyone? Let's talk for a moment about that. I'm going to get off my notes a little bit, but I promise I'll veer back on. The heroes of the faith. I picked out a few. King David, he faced Goliath. We sang about that today in Same God. He was hunted down by King Saul, hiding in caves. That would be a little stressful. Then as a ruler, he led armies into battles, wars, violent wars, um, cared for his soldiers and knew that this sometimes would not be a good outcome for them and their family. But by using his gifts as a writer, as we read the Psalms, I always, I pull so many of the Psalms, as you know, when I open up our service. Um, I love his writings. I mean, Moses wrote one of the Psalms as well. But um, so David, in that time of stress, he impacted us by using his talent and his gift for writing, Right? And also, he had a gift of musicianship, so he played his harp. He used that, soothing his stress. Let's talk about Daniel. He was another hero of the faith. Do you think getting thrown in a lion's den would be a little stressful? <laughs> yeah. Remember that story, how he refused to bow to the king. He wanted to do well, wanted to live a life that was honoring to those in 
command over him, but he couldn't because he would be defying the one true God. So he continued his practice of praying. Remember what happened? He got thrown into the lion's den anyways. By continuing his practice of praying and being steadfast and sure in expressing his trust of God, he experienced rest. He wasn't freaking out in that lion's den trying to get away from him. He was resting in God. That's huge. I mean, we heard these stories when we were little kids in Sunday school, but boy, are they in the fibers of our growth in Christ, aren't they? Just when you think of the strength and what happened with those. Queen Esther, she was told of the plot to kill the Jews. She braved through it by petitioning to the king, which could have resulted in her death. We saw the play down at Sight and Sound, Queen Esther. It was so beautifully done, really had an impact. She was fasting. And what else did she do? She fasted, she had others fast, and she asked for prayer from them. That's what we need to do as well when we want to impact others. Sometimes it calls for a fast. Um, Pastor Chris, when he gave the announcements just now, there is a time that we as Living Waters Chapel pull away for that. I encourage you to do that, however that looks for you. Everybody um, does that differently. But And asking other people to pray for you, sharing your burdens with one another. What comes when you do that? What happens? Hopefully you get answers to prayer, but what else? Don't you find peace comes? I find peace comes when I know that others are praying for me. I know in rough times in my life, I can feel the prayers of others. See what we're building here, what we're building with King David, what we're building with Daniel, what we're building with Queen Esther. Stress relief for David was soothing his soul with his music and scripture. For Daniel, prayer, steadfastness, staying sure. Queen Esther, fasting and calling others to prayer. Peace and victory came in that. It's sure to be there for us. There's a few more I wanted to point out quickly. Joseph, who was sold into slavery by his brothers. Remember that one. Those are loving brothers. He stayed true to God's plan for his life despite that, despite getting thrown in the pit, even though his circumstances were horrible and awful at times. What came for him? Leadership came down the road. Restoration came. He was restored to his family and the relationship there. And comfort. Comfort came to him and his family as their prayers were met for their needs. Two more, then I'll move on. Apostle Paul, he encountered shipwrecks, mistreated, beaten, imprisoned. All for what? His passion. His passion for preaching about Jesus. Impacting others. Despite the adversities that come. Despite the stresses around us. Still impacting others for Christ despite that. In that, Paul felt joy, and oh my, did he ever gain strength in that. He is an absolute example of strength for us by standing firm in Christ. And then lastly, of course, is Jesus Christ who came to the earth for all that he's done for us. Do you think he expressed stress? The Garden of Gethsemane, he was stressed. Ultimately, he withstood ridicule, the religious elite. He withstood that. Misunderstanding, constantly misunderstood. But all the while, those negatives that I'm throwing out right now, as that was happening, he was impacting people for eternity and for Christ. Only after three years of his selfless ministry, he was nailed to the cross, faced the horrifying death at the hands of the Romans, but he saw God's plan. We have to know, people, that there is a plan for us, and we don't see it always. The older I get and I look backward in my life, now that I have more years behind me than ahead of me, I can so easily see the hand of God in the path and the people that he used. Remember I talked about the people on the train of life? Oh, that's why that person was in my life. Sometimes they're irritating, and you're like, oh, that was to grow me and get over myself on that. <laughs> Sometimes, most times, they're pleasant. But whatever, whoever it is that God puts in our train of life, it is absolutely, whether we like them or not, it's ultimately to grow us 
and to continue us in his plan. It's such a cool thing to see as the age. That's one thing that's great about aging. If I think of more in the next 15 minutes, I'll let you know. <laughs> but that's one. <laughs> okay. Um, just asking God to give us his perspective of life. You know, when, when I said that plan is laid out before us, saying, God, please show me your perspective. When I'm getting irritated, when I'm like, what are you doing, God? Show me your, your uh, plan and your purpose in my life. Let's read. I uh, want to look here because, of course, I will prepare too much here. I always over-prepare. I tell you that every time. I have some scriptures, by the way, Albert, that are not, that I didn't give for the screen, so don't be freaking out <laughs> when I give. I, I love the word of God, as you know, and I like to, some of the scriptures were coming to me after I got the outline to them. So uh, one of the things that I had listed here for impacting others, how can we strengthen ourselves in order to impact others better? Psalm 119, 143. This one is one of those that is not on the screen, but we will get to that in a moment. Psalm 119, 143. Let me read this one to you. Trouble and anguish have overtaken me. This is David writing. Yet your commandments are my delights. So when stress and pressure come, trouble and anguish have overtaken me. Yet your commandments are my delights. Joy comes. So that impact could be joy that we show to others. We want to have joy in our countenance, joy in our being, not a fake joy. We want a genuine joy. And it comes when we read the word of God. It strengthens our life to properly impact us for the kingdom of God. Just as Esther did, sharing our burdens with one another, reading God's word, praying together, uh, Proverbs tells us, anxiety weighs down the heart, but a kind word cheers it up. Asking others to pray for us, cheering them up with a kind word. Hey, I appreciated that. Hey, you look great. Hey, whatever. It's, it's not really a natural thing to do. A lot of people do not have that. I think we need to exercise that more in building each other up, impacting them. Another way is looking up and getting out in nature. I'd love to be outside. Every chance that I get, I'm outside. But God's creation, a walk in the woods, sitting and watching a sunset, I love it. Psalms 104, 24, and 31, it talks about that. How many are your works, Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. May the glory of the Lord endure forever, and may the Lord rejoice in his works. Another way that we can fill ourselves to give to others is that, soaking in everything that he's given us. We sang the song Gratitude at the end of worship today. Father, thank you for your beautiful creation. The animals, it's just a beautiful time of year, isn't it, with everything blooming and the sun sets at night and now you can see the stars, the sky's clear and it's just a beautiful thing. Uh, Esther asked for those prayers for people. It instantly connects us to our Heavenly Father and all that he offers us. Now we're back to our notes, John 12, 1 to 8. Albert has this for you on the screen. Let's read this together. John 12, verses 1 to 8. Then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethlehem, where Lazarus was, was who had been dead whom he had raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. Mary took a pound of very costly oil, of spikenard, anointed the feet of Jesus, wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, Why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? This, he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money box, and he used to take what was put in it. But Jesus said, let her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial. For the poor you have with you always, but me you do not have always. The only recorded words of Judas are right there. Only thing that's recorded that he said. 
he, as verse 6 says, or uh, yeah, verse 6 says how it wasn't because he cared, it was because he was a thief, and he didn't like that. But Christ said, let her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial, expressing her worship to him, helping someone else. She was, that's all she knew to do at that moment. She's like, what can I do? And that's what she poured out to the Lord. It's a beautiful thing. Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. Let me show you this one. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in the light as Christ has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. That's what he does for us. He pours out his life. He pours out his self to us every day. Do we just hustle, bustle along and ignore it? Or do we drink in and think about it when we lay upon our bed in the morning before we wake up, as we go about our day, before we close our eyes at night, thinking about the goodness of God? What fragrance did he pour out for me today? What offering did he give in the midst of things that may not be going our way, like the heroes of the faith that I told you about? Some of those things weren't all just great bed of roses in their life, but knowing that God is there and he's pouring himself out for us. The rat race of life. In order to build ourselves up strong to help others, we need to learn to rest, allowing God to minister to me. Allow God to pour out himself on us, like Mary Magdalene poured out all that she had for him. We give that back. Psalms 23 said, He makes me to lie down in green pastures, He leads me beside quiet waters and refreshes my soul, learning to rest in him, focusing and thinking about what he's doing for us. Another scripture that I have is James 1.12. And this one's in your notes. James 1.12. Let me find this one. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. It marks us as special. As we lay things before the Lord, the crown of life, we, I read a little bit of that in my introduction, how we will find that it will be worth it. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. That's a beautiful song, isn't it? And we'll get into that. Loving people, it's not always desirable having that desire to impact others. But we're commanded to do it, no matter what the cost. Why, God, why? Some days we're like, why? Why do I have to love people? Why do I have to impact them for your kingdom? Some people, it's easier than others, isn't it? (laughs) Don't name names. Don't be nudging anybody in your pew there. (laughs) God knows what we need better than we know ourselves. I think the last time I spoke maybe a month ago or so, I was saying how he's our creator. He's our designer. He knows what we need better than we know ourselves. But we have a tendency to want to, I've said this already too, that God's writing the story of our life. I saw this online, but we want to keep pulling the pen out of his hand, right? There he is writing the story of our life. Give me that. Let me rewrite that. Let me take that out. Let me add this. (laughs) He's like, can you let me alone? Loving others must be an important element of our lives. Trusting him with that. Trusting him with the people that he has put on our train of life. Trusting that they're there for a purpose. Nobody is discarded. And some of you are thinking, "Eh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Really, loving people, I will trust you. Then the song came to my mind, I will trust, I will trust in you. Lauren Daigle's song, we can trust him with that. Verse three of her, I had to pull it up when I was doing my notes, I I was singing that song to myself. Her verse three of that song says, truth is you know what tomorrow brings. There's not a day ahead of you that God has not seen. God knows what tomorrow brings. There's not a day that he hasn't seen. So in all things, be my life, be my breath. I want what you want, Lord, 
I don't want nothing less. That can certainly ease things too. When you know that God goes before us, he already is in tomorrow for us, standing facing us waiting. That's good to know, isn't it? No matter what's going on, a life with Jesus is not always wonders and miracles. I talked a little bit about the heroes of the faith. Some stressors came. Some not-so-nice things came. That's how it is in life, whether it's a financial crisis, a health crisis, a relationship crisis, temptations, calamities, moral failure, whatever it is. We're human. The heroes of the faith were human. Christ was part man, part God. He understands what we go through and we face. We live in Christ. He abides in us, but around us is a fallen world. So that's the trick. Growing in Christ, building up his kingdom in the midst of yuck. We're not in heaven yet. But John 16, 33 says, I have told you these things so that you may have peace in this world. You will have trouble. But I have overcome the world. Don't you love that? John 16, 33, take heart. I have overcome the world. He's the overcomer. Doesn't say, well, if you don't have enough faith, not helping you. Well, if you don't do this right, not helping you. No, he's there for us no matter what. Sometimes he takes us on the path that we want. Sometimes it's a path a little bit different than what we saw. But I can guarantee you, at the end of that, he's still standing there in your tomorrow with his arms stretched wide. Amen? When we abide in him, we will overcome Satan's darts, however that may look. How does true healing of the body and soul come? I need it, I want it to impact others for Christ. We need a strong body, we need a strong soul in order to do that for him. For true healing to come in order to love people the way God intended us to, the way Mary Magdalene did, the way Queen Esther did. I named some men as well. It's Mother's Day, but I put some men heroes of the faith in there as well because I want you all to be impacted for that. True healing comes from confessing our sins. We talk about that all the time, many times when we open up prayer and worship. Coming into the house of the Lord and just using it as our soul wash. You drive into a car wash. This is our soul wash machine in here. Washing our soul clean. Father, we take our time to stand before you, to cleanse us once again to grow us once again in you. We need it afresh every day because of the fallen world that we live in, just like the heroes of the faith, faith, pressing on, not getting deterred, not getting distracted, pressing on through all of that, no matter what's going on around us, thanking God in all things. That's what our song this morning on gratitude was, to keep moving forward in him. Psalms 37, verse 29, right before that in your notes, it says, a life with Jesus is not always wonders and miracles. Love comes costly. I read James 1, 12. Let's read Psalm 37, 28, and 29. Let's look at this. For the Lord loves justice. He does not forsake his saints. They are preserved forever but the descendants of the wicked shall be cut off. The mouth of the righteous, I don't have this one down there, but I'm going to read the next one. The, now, the mouth of the righteous speak wisdom. His, talk tongues of, his tongue talks of justice, excuse me. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. Isn't that beautiful? The law of his God, the law of our God is in our heart and none of our steps shall slide. That's a promise from God's word. We hold on to him no matter what it is. People will see that. We will impact others for the kingdom. On Mother's Day, of course, our most important thing to impact is is our children, 
Our children, you've all heard it before, they watch us more than they hear us. <laughs> you can tell them, tell them, tell them, but they're watching our lives. Are we impacting them <clears throat> the way we want to? Point three, despite the sacrifice of living a life for Christ, we will find it is worth it all to serve Jesus. Romans 14, 8. Let's bring that one up. I love this one. For if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. That gives comfort, doesn't it? Whether we're here or we pass from this life, hey, it's a win-win because we're winning here on earth because we have the Lord with us. We have our loved ones right around us. But if we die, if we're on the other side, we're with Jesus, we're with some loved ones over there, it's a win-win. Isn't that the beauty of the cross? The beauty of his plan B? Thank you, Lord, for that. He didn't need to do that. John 8, 12. Let's look at that one. John 8, verse 12. Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. I have a heart beside of that scripture in my Bible. I love that. I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. I know at my age, I, I remember my grandparents saying it and my parents saying, you know, oh, this world, oh, this world. Well, now... Rich and I say that to each other. Oh, this world. <laughs> Is that because we're getting old? I don't know. But it seems like a pretty dark place. It seems a little darker than what I remember it to be. But Jesus is with us, the light of the world, guiding us, directing us. These scriptures come more and more to life the older that I get, I know. One more for this, Proverbs 14, 27. The fear of the Lord is the fountain of life. To turn one away from the snares of death, the fountain of life, refreshing. He makes me lie in green pastures. He restores my soul. That's what he has for us. Even though we're going through some things that I described that the heroes of the faith went through, we still, despite that, I, I can't impact anyone for Christ today. My car just broke down, and then I overtread my ankle. Now that's all swollen. No. No. Whatever it is that is coming your way that day, we can still impact others for Christ because he's with us. He's the light that leaves us. Jesus was and is the ultimate sacrifice. In John 12, Jesus knew his suffering and death was fast approaching. Despite this, he showed up for his friends selflessly. selflessly. His presence was a fragrant offering to them. That's what you are to others. You really are. A true friend impacting others for Christ. We are going to watch a video in a little bit. But before we do that, I want to tell you God sees you. He knows what you're going through. He knows what points of this message pierced your heart today. So in that, I want you to take this week to maybe go over your notes again, read these scriptures in your time with God, and ask him to show you exactly what he wants you to do with certain relationships that you have in your life, the people on your train. God, what do you want me to do for them? And in turn, it will be worth it all. Amen? Amen. At this point, I'm going to say goodbye to our online audience. Please contact us here at the church if you have any prayer needs, if there's anything that you need. We pray, pray that you have a blessed week and that this message will go with you, whatever you face this week.